sew sewers. Today I'm taking you behind the scenes while I sew a bomber jacket using Simplicity 8418. Keep watching until the end to get an update on my other September makes. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is So So Lounge. I'm so glad that we're hanging out together today. I'm starting off my September makes with the bomber jacket from Simplicity. One thing I like about this jacket is that it has raglan sleeves, which means I can get them in a lot faster and easier than set in sleeves, which is what my other two jackets have. And I got my rib knit binding in the mail from New York, and I'm super excited about that because once I reviewed my pattern instructions, I realized that it was not a last thing you add, but more of a in the middle thing you add prior to attaching the lining. So in order to kind of get started, I needed that, I've got it, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Before we go any further, I wanna point out that I do have all of my fabric and lining cut out, and I have all of my marks and notches transferred so that now we can get to the sewing part and I can remove those paper pattern pieces. I like to take the time before I sit down to sew to review the pattern instructions. And it's a good thing I did because that's how I realized that I really needed the knit rib binding in order to really start putting this jack together. So just with a general overview, these instructions are pretty easy to follow along. We are going to start by attaching the pocket to the front and the back of the jacket on the side seams. We're gonna get those all sewn up. Then we're gonna make the sleeve and then we're gonna attach the sleeve to the jacket. Now, once we've got that done, we're gonna put in the zipper, then we'll add the, um, the collar binding cuffs and the bottom binding. Then we'll put in the lining and get it all finished up. Now, the instructions aren't super clear on the zipper, not as much as I'd like since I've never done that before. So I am going to have to pull some of my fashion books and see how to do that, but we will get to that a little bit later. I'm not gonna stress about it right now. We are going to start by pinning the pockets to our pattern pieces, and then we're gonna head to the sewing machine. Now that the pockets are all pinned to their um, pattern pieces, I'm going to be stitching at 3 eighths of an inch along the whole edge of the pocket, so just from where it starts to where it ends. Once I get that done on all the different pattern pieces, I am going to flip it out this seam will go towards the pocket and then we're going to do some understitching. So once those pockets are attached to their main pattern pieces, next we are going to be matching the front and the back along the side seam. So you don't have to worry about this sleeve seam up here. We'll deal with that a little bit later. I'm going to focus on getting this pinned together. There is not a notch on the side seam, but there is a notch on the pocket. So I'm just going to line these up. They're going to all match up anyway. I'm going to go over to the pocket, get that notch in the right place and put in a pin. And then I'm going to come back around to this side seam and put a pin where the pocket and the side seam are connected just to hold that in place. Now, one thing to note is I'm going to be sewing down the side seam around the pocket. Sometimes when you're putting in pockets, you keep going around the pocket and then finish down the other end of the side seam. We're not doing this in this case because these are going to be folded. So we are just going to sew around the top of the pocket and stop. And then I'm going to come back and finish the side seam before I move on to the next step. Coming up next, I'm going to clip the seam across the top right here. If I can clip it, yeah, it's a really thick seam. Okay, so you've got to have some brute strength. I'm going to clip the seam. There we go. It's right above the seam line for the pocket. It's a little chunky right there, but that's okay because this is a Letterman's jacket. So I'm going to clip this side and I'm going to the head to this ironing board and press those open and then I will come back to the sewing machine and we will start working on those sleeves. I forgot that I need to finish the bottom of the jacket before we move on to the sleeve. So that's gonna be pretty easy. I'm gonna set my machine to a basting stitch and 
One instruction says to baste the pocket in place, and then it says to baste between the small dots, which is right here on the front of the jacket, um, around to the other one on the other front side piece, and we can do that all in the same step. So I'm just gonna start out basting at the seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch, and then I'm gonna come back and do a second basting stitch um, inside that seam allowance, at about a quarter of an inch and we're going to use that to gather the bottom of the jacket onto the band once we get to that step so i've got that last row of basting stitches in and i did leave the thread tails long because i am going to need to pull them a little bit later and so that's really the only time i ever want to keep them long so i've got my base of my jacket here um, Clementine has come to assist today. So now I'm ready to move on with my sleeves and I'll pull those out. So this looks like it is, it's funny because these are all numbered. So it keeps throwing me off. I'm like, wait, that's not piece eight. Um, I need the bottom of the sleeve. So I have both of my sleeve parts. I'm going to pin them together to sew that center seam down the middle of them. Then we will sew the underarm seam and I'm going to get everything put in and then we will tackle the zipper, I think. I've got my sleeves all pinned and so I'm starting with that outside shoulder seam first. And this is going to help the sleeve go over your shoulder. Now sometimes a raglan sleeve will be one piece and then they'll put a dart in the top and that's always a little bit harder to fit because you have to adjust it to your individual shoulder since all shoulders are not the same. And when I previously made a raglan sleeve dress, that's the problem I had. So when I put it on, the shoulders kind of stick up funny. So I had to go back in and do that. But this will not be a problem because I you have this seam here. So that'll make things a little bit easier. If you're following along, I am on step number eight and move these scissors out of the way. I need to flip my sleeve so that the right side is out because we are going to be matching right sides to right sides and then sewing from the wrong side. So this one goes, this is that sleeve. Here's my other one. Flip this one. And usually at this point in the garment is when I need to make a decision about finishes and how I'm going to finish those seams. But when you've got a lining, you do not have to worry about the seam finishes inside of your make because the lining is going to cover everything up. Now, I usually forget to do seam allowances, so that is the added bonus of a lining but I have not put a lining into a jacket in a very, very long time. The very first jacket that I ever sewed was for college, of course, and I um, put in a lining and pretty sure grandma helped me with that because once again, sleeves, right? And um, it didn't ever really fit that right because I was, I just picked the wrong size pattern and y'all know how that goes. It's, it's one of those things that, you have to go by your measurements and not the pattern size. And either I didn't measure myself really well or I just decided to make a smaller size, but my jacket never quite fit. So that was a bummer. Um, I don't think I got a horrible grade on that one, probably because grandma helped me. So it didn't look horrible. And um, anyway, I am just pinning these in the right place. Did I do this right? Or not. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I sewed my sleeves wrong. I sewed the, uh, okay. So I gotta go back. I gotta go rip this all out because these are the two backs and these are the two fronts and I gotta start again. So I'm gonna go work on that and then we'll regroup. So I was thinking that maybe you guys want to hang out with me while I rip this out. So you can see how I do it because I literally have to rip out both of these sleeves. Thankfully, the jacket is fine. Um, I was wondering why one of them felt tighter when I was putting in the gathering stitches. So the good thing about sewing at a two and a half stitch length is that it makes it a lot faster to rip the whole thing out when you mess up like I do. 
So I um, used to sew with really teeny, teeny, tiny stitches and it took forever to rip anything out. And I ripped out my fabric a lot sometimes. So I think it was when I was in my um, portfolio class, which is like where we have to make our own designs and it was a big old elaborate class. And it was during spring break that I had given up to sew because I really didn't know what I was doing back then. And anyway, I totally messed something up. I, th I thought I did it right. My professor looked at it and was like, well, how are you gonna finish this neck edge? And I was just started crying because I didn't know how to finish my neck edge because I'd taken my courses out of order and hadn't taken the pattern making class yet. So I was at a total loss and had spent all this time working on this blouse. And thankfully my classmate offered to rip it out for me while I went and got lunch. And Stephanie was a sweetheart and sewed really, really fast. She like learned to sew when she was younger and just was always ahead of everybody else in all of our classes. And anyway, so when she, I came back, everything was pinned the way it was supposed to be. And she asked me why I sewed with such tiny stitches and I had no answer for her because frankly, I didn't know. And that's when she told me that if I sewed at a two or a two and a half, it would be a lot easier to rip out if I made a mistake. And that's what she did. And I started sewing with a two and a half at that point in time. So that's just the stitch length, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. And it just makes it easier because the, um, the stitches will come out a lot easier. And so I decided it was time to take a break after I finished all the ripping punctured my hand with the seam ripper and ran out of bobbin thread. So I had some lunch. I uh, kicked the air conditioner down to cool off the so-so lounge because it's getting a little warm in here. And I took my hair out of the ponytail because that was giving me a headache. So I think we're ready to keep going at this point. I have my sleeves sewn up. I did put one of them in to just test it out, make sure it worked. It does, so yay, finally got it right. I am gonna show y'all how I'm doing the second one. So right sides together, this time with a front notch and a back notch on the sleeve instead of two fronts and two backs. So I'm matching up at this underarm seam. You wanna make sure that gets all lined up nicely. I'm gonna put in some pins. I did take the time to go over to the sewing machine and press open all my seams so that once I put in this armhole, my seams will be nice and open and ready to go. Pressing makes a huge difference while you're sewing. Um, it actually took me taking private lessons to find that out. That was not something I was taught in uh, design school. And it, it really makes a huge difference if you press as you go. So press your seams open, press your darts. Um, just do that as part of the process because in the long run, it's gonna give your make a more finished look and it will not look so homemade. So let me just finish up this other side and then I will get this all sewn into place. My sleeves are all sewn in and they look pretty good. I did try this on to make sure it fits because I made this in a size 14 instead of a 16 like I normally do. If you look at the pattern um, for this, the center front piece, it says that the total body ease is about six and a half inches over your normal measurements. And so for a 16, that would be 44 and a half inches versus for a 14, it would be 42 and a half inches. So because I wanna wear this um, bomber jacket, more like a suit jacket for lack of a better word, I'm not gonna be having a whole bunch of stuff underneath and I'm just gonna have like a knit shirt. And I didn't want it to be quite that boxy and big. So I went a size down and thankfully it works. It, I have about, cause I'm about a 38 inch bust. So I have about, you know, four inches in there and that should be, you know, fine. It's gonna be comfortable and um, it is working. Now, one thing that the pattern instructions did not say to do, but I'm gonna do because it's my make, is I'm going to trim the seam allowance in the sleeve. So I, on the first sleeve, I already tried this out once. So I'm gonna clip it down to the seam line between these notches. And then I'm gonna trim this out to about half of the current width. The seam 
in the underarm is pretty chunky um, once you get that all in there and it's just it's just too bulky and then the instructions say to press the seam allowance towards the inside of the sleeve and that's creating more bulk too so I've decided that I'm just going to press it open um, at the top above the notch and then underneath the notch I'll press that in towards the sleeve and then this is what it's going did I flip this already? Yes. So this is what it's going to look like. It'll The seam's pressed open. This bottom seam will be pressed towards the inside. And now I'm ready to get going to the next step. The next step is rib knit. So it's getting the knit and cutting it out. And this is making me really nervous, y'all. So this is what the knit looks like. Um, it looks like giant sweater bands. And one end is finished the both ends are finished um and i'm really kind of nervous about cutting this in the pattern shape of the collar so since it's getting to be the afternoon i think i'm going to concentrate on sewing the lining together right now and save this for a morning activity when i'm fresh and alert and i haven't stabbed myself in the hand and had all this other drama of the day so that's what i'm going to do next it's not going to be very exciting but it's pretty much the exact same way i put together the jacket i will not sew the sleeves incorrectly this time I'm I finished sewing my lining and I put it on my dress form so that Clementine can't roll around on it and get it covered in cat hair before I put it in my jacket. Now the jacket itself is fairly done as far as the outer shell goes and I am moving through the instructions to the rib knit banding. Now looking at my pattern piece, it's going to be really close on that bottom band because I have to fold it on the, um, on the fold but it is going to fit. I did stretch it out a little bit. And when I'm looking at the way this is constructed, I was like, is this right? Should this be folded in a double layer? And I did exactly what you'd expect to do. I went and got my own letterman jacket from high school and I looked at the various parts and yes, it is a two sided uh, band and the bottom edge is just where the fold is. So I feel a little bit more confident about that moving forward because it just seemed really weird to me that this band is this thickness and then you're gonna be folding it, but I'm getting ready to cut everything out. I got my knit bands all sewn together and it, they weren't too terribly difficult. If you're using this kind of banding because you decide to make this jacket, um, press it because it helps it lie a little bit flatter it's I've got extra threads here. Um, it kind of fights you because it wants to stay in its flat state. So if you just give it a quick press, it um, it behaves a little bit better. Now, while my mics were charging, I was working on one of the sleeves and getting this in, and I discovered a few things. First of all, if you just gather the sleeve to be two inches smaller than its original circumference, which originally it's 12, I was gathering it down to 10. It's really tight to get over your free arm, first of all, especially once you add the cuff. Next, once you start moving it around with the thickness of the cuff, it's not feeding on the feed dogs really well. So it's, you're kind of having to help it around which means you're going to stretch it out and those basting stitches aren't holding really well so what I did um after I ripped this one out I went back in and I stitched the gathers in place with a two and a half inch stitch length so put in a permanent stitch length to hold them where they're supposed to be and then I added the band now the band is very chunky when you put this all together and it's still not tight enough in my opinion um, around my wrist the way that I would like it to be but I can live with it and I've already ripped this out once and I don't want to do that again. Um, it's in there. It's just basted in there for now once we add the lining and we'll put in the permanent stitch but it's in place. It looks fine. Um, it looked really bad the first time um, and it was enormous. So you know it's just the nature of the free arm that I can only get so much on there and so much around. And once you add in this band, it's really thick 
um, to get everything moving around in this direction. Now, one other thing I did that the instructions did not say is I trimmed out this inside seam allowance in this cup. I'm gonna snip this here. This is the one I had to rip out. So it's really, really bulky when you look at it that way. And then you add the other layer of fabric and it was very, very hard to get my machine to, to move. And so I'm just gonna trim this down. I trimmed down the other one before I sewed it. So I'm just taking off like two ribs off the side um, to just help it and make that a little bit easier to just get in there. I did press this as well. So I did press the seam allowance open. And then once I got the band sewed and folded, I did press it again so that it would fold a little bit easier. The sleeve bands are okay. They're not as tight as I'd like them to be, but I don't feel like ripping this out a third time and, or is it the second time? A second time. And it'll be fine. I think that if I, um, I might be able to just get them wet and shrink them a little bit back into their normal state because I think I have stretched them out a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm going to move on to my collar and I did press this as well. So the instructions kind of leave out all of that. I did press all of my knit pieces to make sure that they fold nicely and everything matches up right. And I didn't want to make sure that I got this, this bottom edge as pointy as possible because I think I'm going to catch it in there and it's going to be like the very um, top edge of the collar that's going to be connected by the zipper and that needs to look nice because, you know, it's not like the sleeve cuffs that nobody's really going to notice. It's like going to be right at the front and I don't want that to look crazy. So I got the band on. It looks fine. Uh, my jacket is a little bit gathered in a few places, a little more than the other, but overall it looks good. It's on, the front edges match up, and that's the important part because the next step is adding the zipper. So I gotta move, I don't know why I keep making such a mess with my stuff. Okay, let me move these out of the way. Pick up everything so I can get this nice and flat and then be able to read my pattern instructions. Here's the zipper. Okay, so what I do when I'm having a hard time understanding something is read it out loud. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna read it out loud while I'm filming so y'all can experience my complete process and get this all smooth. So it says, Separate the zipper, okay, I've done that. On the outside, pin slider side of zipper face down on the right front opening edge with the top at the large dot. I don't know where the large dot is. Where did the large dot go? Mm, I think that's the one that was there under the collar. Got one pin in there. And then it says, with top stop at large dot and lower end of zipper at small dot on the front band, having zipper tape a quarter of an inch from the front edge. So the top stop is that little actual stop. So that needs to be at that mark right there. And then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side, and then I'm going to baste it and stitch both sides of the zipper in place at five eighths of an inch from the front edge. My zipper is all basted in. I, that did work. I did put them together to make sure they were all lined up. One thing I did do is I did rip out this top part where the collar was attached so I could see where that dot was. I'm making the size 14 and the zipper is a little bit long so I do need to cut off um, the stop and then the very first little um, tooth up here to make it line up where it's supposed to. The important part to be lined up is the bottom because that's part of the whole finishing of the waistband and if that's hanging out the bottom it's gonna look crazy. So that's where the matching starts. Match there and I've gone up and um, now in order to, for everything to be lined up where it's supposed to I have to cut off the top of that and I'm going to do that before I sew it in, but I also 
pulled off this part of the collar because I'm not sure what that's supposed to be doing. I might have sewn it a little too far, but it's going to interfere with my ability to put in the zipper. So I'm going to just pull that out a little bit and I'm sure I can fix it or hand sew it if needed once I um, get to that step after we've attached the lining. I'm ripping again and you may be surprised by that, but the instruction said to pin in the zipper, as we discussed, as I read them out loud, to a quarter of an inch from the front edge and then to stitch at five eighths of an inch. Well, to be able to stitch at five eighths of an inch, it's not a quarter of an inch from, an e from the edge. It's a little tiny bit more. So if you have to keep that at five eighths, then you can't do it where it's based in. So I don't know if my zipper is narrower than the zipper they used for the instructions or exactly what, but now I have to go back and do this. My suggestion would be to measure from the edge of the zipper tape where you're gonna be stitching five eighths of an inch to the edge and then pin it and baste it that way to save yourself the hassle of possibly having the wrong size zipper um, that's the wrong width compared to the instructions because, like I said, if you pin it at four a quarter, you can't stitch at five eighths because you'll be on top of the teeth and then the zipper won't work. Okay, I got the zipper in. It wasn't too horrible. It's actually not too bad. If I just would have measured from five eighths from the beginning, wouldn't have had these problems. But it's in. That's what's important. And now I'm attaching the lining and the lining goes right sides together so the whole finished side goes against this i have my jacket turned inside out because that's how i'm gonna have to sew it and basically it's just matching up all the notches and everything from the lining to the various parts of the uh, completed jacket so that we can get everything connected and put together the lining is in my jacket finally got it all sewn in where it's supposed to be. The sleeves are into the, the sleeves where they're supposed to be. And now is the moment of truth to find out if I did this right and everything looks good from the right side. So I am going to start by pulling, this is so weird to do this. So I'm going to be pulling the jacket through this hole in the lining. And in theory, everything should flip out to the right side and look perfectly wonderful because I did such a good job sewing this. And um, there's the sleeve. Okay, so we're still flipping. And I saved this for recording because I knew that once I got this all flipped, there was no way to get it back. So I am, I'm seeing this for the first time with you guys. Um, okay, let me pull that sleeve out. Okay. I'm gonna tear the hole back there, so it's a lot of jacket to get through. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like it's gonna happen, maybe. All right, so the outside looks good. Oh, that's the bottom. Okay, now I gotta tuck the sleeves back into the sleeve holes or the armholes into the sleeves in the right direction. And it looks like the magic has happened and the jacket, if I can get this through, is going to look okay. Okay, so that is the jacket and the lining is in. It's very exciting, let me flip this out. It looks like everything came out pretty well um, and all the, all the parts are properly lined up. The collar looks nice and I still have a little bit more work to do. I need to attach the sleeve lining to the sleeves, which is um, the, one of the next steps. And then the very last thing I need to do, once I get all these corners poked out, is stitch the zipper in place with the lining from the top to just keep that from being kind of flappy like it is right now. So I still need to get all the pockets lined up and things like that, but all in all, it looks pretty good. So I am happy with that if you want to see it on and how I plan to wear it at the conference, then you'll have to tune in for the video at the end of the month when I will show you all my makes. 
And I have a few thoughts on this before we conclude. First off, if you're gonna make this jacket, do not buy this rib knit that is for Letterman's jackets. I think it's for industrial purposes. It is really, really high quality. It is very, very thick, but is extremely hard to use on a home sewing machine because once you get all the seams lined up, you can barely get it under the presser foot. So I think it's more for industrial. I know that they made a, a different one, which may have been thinner. I did not check the weight when I bought it, but if I make this jacket again, I will definitely use that kind because this was challenging and thankfully I have a good machine that could get it through, but that may not work with all machines. Second, I would use a lighter weight exterior fabric. Um, this is that lightweight canvas that I talked about earlier. And it's very nice, but it just adds to the bulk when I already have these bulky um, rib knit bands that I'm working with. So just some things to consider. And I did give you some tips throughout the video as to different ways that I think it'd be easier to sew this. I won't go into those again, but if you're wondering what's going on with my other makes, the comic book jacket is all cut out and ready to start. And that's the jacket I'm going to be working on with my grandma. She's gonna help me put in the sleeves. So that will be coming up next week. And then I still need to cut out my Alice in Wonderland jacket, but I've developed a plan to do that. So I think I'm gonna be on my way for that one as well. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe, leave a comment below and let me what you know what you think about the bomber jacket and if you're gonna try and sew it. And until we meet again, happy sewing. Don't go, there's another great video coming up next. You're definitely gonna wanna watch this one.